Hello everyone, um, my name is Gordon Logie and I am a data scientist at Spark Geo and today it is my pleasure to be with you here at FOS4G to talk to you about a tool we developed for mapping fireburn severity and extent in watersheds uh, to be uh, sorry, to be used for flood risk assessment. So jumping right in, why did we do this work in the first place? Um, well, in 2021, the Canadian province of British Columbia, or BC, experienced a severe heat wave, which led to the third worst wildfire season on record. Uh, the fires burned notably close to several communities uh, and actually resulted in an entire town, Lytton, BC, to burn to the ground, as shown on the right here. Now, following on the wildfire season, in the winter of 2021, uh, an atmospheric river rainfall event occurred, which dumped massive amounts of rain on southern BC and caused severe flooding, major damage to transport infrastructure, and billions of dollars in economic impacts. Now, on the face of it, this seemed like separate disasters, but actually there are some linkages between them. So in a healthy, unburnt forest, as shown on the left here, uh, the trees and other vegetation as well as the soil can intercept rainfall, uh, preventing or slowing it from entering streams. However, when a forest burns, like shown on the right, uh, it can create a water repellent soil crust. Uh, essentially, the soil ends up acting like pavement. And so rather than uh, penetrating the soil, it actually just runs off into adjacent streams, as shown here. Um, so consequently, you can have uh, more rapid runoff, more runoff in total, which can cause higher stream flows um, and just greater, greater damage from flooding. Um, also, wildfire damage slopes are more prone to erosion, which can enhance the risk of landslides as well. So based on these linkages, uh, and we know that understanding where and when fires have occurred is important to assess potential flood risk. Now to talk very briefly, about our system. The process is carried out in three stages. In the first stage, we use coarse resolution NASA firms data to compute polygons, like you see here, uh, which can give the rough extent and timing of our fires. We then take those polygons and use it to query Sentinel-2 data, which we retrieve before and after imagery uh, for the fire, and we use it to calculate the fire severity and extent. And then in the last stage, we then take our burn severity uh, data and we intersect it with uh, some river basin geometry, and then we can calculate the burn area for each basin. So to talk quickly about some results from this work, uh, we ran the system over southern BC. So this is part of the Thompson River Basin. These are the sub-basins for the Thompson. Um, and we can see uh, each sub-basin is colorized based on the burn percentage. Um, which uh, goes as high as 15% plus. Actually, this one up here was as high as 20, 25%. Um, you can also see the fire severity, uh, low, moderate, and high classes overlaid for the area. Um, now, finally, I wanted to show you that we digitized road damage from the flood. Um, and we can see them shown here as the purple dots. And uh, we can see that there is a spatial correlation with some of our fires and our road damage locations. In particular, I want to highlight two of these fires um, where we saw like quite a number of road damage locations that were immediately adjacent to uh, severe wildfires. This one on the right actually was the Lytton fire and it burned down the town of Lytton, which is located somewhere in here, I think. And just to give you a quick look at what that damage looks like, we had uh, you know, severe road washouts, we had landslides, uh, bridge outages resulting from the fires. So based on the spatial correlations we saw, it does seem probable that the wildfires at least enhanced the flood damage. Uh, so where can you learn more? Uh, if you'd like, we do have a blog post uh, that goes into a lot more detail than I can get in uh, this lightning talk. Um, you can follow this link or you can scan the QR code. Uh, you can also feel free to contact me via email or on Twitter. Thank you very much for coming to the talk. Thank you.